Online. I'm going to turn on your microphone. Yeah, it might be on. We're, we're, on. Oh, we're okay. green and you're red. I know I asked. So, so. <laughs> the first colors. The red, the red looks good on you, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Cassie, are you here? Yep, I'm here. Thank you. Erica Lindbergh? I'm here. Chris Ogren? Mike Riley? He's on his way. He went to Rhodes. Um, Aaron Swetnam? Present. And Robin Vora? Here. Okay, so uh, Jackson, are you online yet? I'm here. Okay, Jackson Dumont for the City of Sisters is here. So and Mike, Mike Riley will be here a little bit late. So uh, it looks like we do have a quorum. Yeah. Um, so next item on the agenda is review and approval of the April meeting minutes. Um, any comments, corrections to the minutes? <laughs> they look good. What I saw in here, that they look good to me as well. It looks like Chris Ogren is here too. He's um, but he's still listed as a attendee. So I think he just needs to be pulled over to a panelist. Okay. Thank you, Cassie. Get from Chris is uh moved over as a panelist. Okay. So uh, so Chris, we acknowledge you are here and present online. Um does any of anybody online have any comments or or uh, changes to the meeting minutes from April? We have a motion to approve the minutes as published. I'll make a motion that we approve the April uh, meeting minutes as okay. published. Thank you, Robin. Second. Chris. Also, Chris. Okay. Where are you going? okay. Um, uh, any discussion? Okay. The minutes are approved. All righty. So, oh, yeah, I guess we need to vote. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, vote to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? Minister approved. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda. We do we need to be able to get the slide short on it. Next item on the agenda is is public comments, and we have one person, uh, Andrew Ross. 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 Ross.
the Bend Airport. 
Uh, so I thought I would mention that. I'm going to go ahead and submit this um, as another reason not to have a landfill over that area. Uh, this is traffic that is um, avoiding clouds. It does not have good visibility. And because of the bird strike hazard, uh, probably wouldn't be a good idea to uh, have the uh, landfill underneath this vector airway. So that's all I have. I'm going to go ahead and submit that. If that, if that, if that. Okay. Jack, could I get back to the So it's it's that gray area of three. They include a private property immediately, 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 immediately.
I change, I change, I change. Yeah, sure. The topography, yeah, topography, yeah, topography.
here, here. Of the of the of the of the And the land use that. To me, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the upcoming. upcoming Engineer, 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 engineer. engineer. Uh, geology, geology, hydrogeology.
then we get into we get environmental, environmental uh, assessment. assessment. That's, that's, that's actually that's pretty much straightforward, straightforward from the standpoint of any property acquisition. That's, 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 that's just as the sounds that we're going to. Um, the overlays um, that are there, there, there and there, how that really how plays, that plays out. Plays out. I can be can be can, be, can go through the process to ultimately have the 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 the
Yeah, and, and I, I can speak to that just a little bit further. What we we do when we put this together, we we put together pretty much a, a full um, kind of capital capital schedule for the, for the project, um, and which lays out you know what are your initial development costs and development activities, and then ultimately as you build out the site, what are those capital expenditures? And part of that is in fact the landfill gas, and and so I think what you're driving at. If we design it for gas recovery, you know, it's going to be more efficient. That's exactly what we do. I mean, the whole it's geared towards, you know, environmental controls, including, you know, all the landfill gas issues, and then ensuring that we've got the systems in place as we build out to take care of those. And so, yeah, so it, it you you kind of build the plumbing, so to speak, as you go, and then at, at some point you have enough gas to actually have a, a, a gas recovery system. Before that, that's when you know we talk about gas flaring. That's when you're having the gas flaring until you have enough to actually um, generate. Uh, well, recover the gas for for pipeline quality, like we're doing it at night, or um, to power generation. I have a, a couple thoughts. One, well, as I mentioned before in the natural resources, I'd appreciate it if you guys would consider the avian predators on stage grass for the Rothy's site. Yeah, there's yeah. been comments uh, that have come in on yeah. that very early yeah. in the process. So that, right. That is amazing. Just want to make sure it's in yeah. there. Yeah, but I think we had that discussion with Fish and Wildlife. Yeah. Game okay. Yeah. And, the, and maybe just to pick up a little bit on Andrew's comment, um, there may be a value in having a, an, an in category opportunities foregone by developing that site. Um, for example, you know, I just, I was, I've been in Turkey for the last 25 days. And the last couple of days, I was in a place called Olu Deniz, where paragliding is, you know, something that's people flying from all over the world to do there. And it's been developed uh, through this chairlifts going up the mountain and people come down. We don't have the Mediterranean Sea with the beautiful islands to come down into, but, <laughs> But, you know, the Millican has its own beauty. And um, you never know when, you know, we're going to get another Bill Healy or Gary Fish or um, Bill Smith to come out there and do something with the paragliding. And having that landfill sit down right below, you know, where they jump off Pine Mountain uh, would, you know, affect the quality of the site. It probably wouldn't happen. So anyway, there's, there's things outside the box that we haven't really thought about. But... That could be future opportunities that we don't see right now, but I was amazed. I mean, that's a huge economic development of that spot in Turkey. People flying all over because the chairlift is going up. They don't have to drive up or walk up the hill. Chairlift was built just for the paragliding. There's no ski area. It was just for the paragliders. So yeah. You've been there? Huge investment there. World. Yeah. World class site. Yeah. I mean, people flying from all over is a huge boost to the economy. I mean, you can never know Millican. Andrew, you're trying to make a city out of the Millican could take off on a different tangent. The tourism dollars that are generated are more or less equal to the access site, which is a not only ruins this massive and takes a lot of tourism. Yeah. It's amazing. With the residents' consideration also, because it's a hundred year landfill, it might be wise to kind of project out. What the residences would look like over the course of the life of the landfill, not just what's there in the town. And, you know, potential loss of revenue and taxes on the fact that nobody wants to live next to our Any other comments, questions on, on page two here? And so we are working with uh, um, parametrics on, on the process. For that, and I'm hoping we'll have that landed in the next month or so, mm -hmm. and we can start working on that, that process. And we'll, we'll also be working with them on doing these assessments on the uh, two potential BLM sites as well. So, with that, Danica. <laughs> Hey. Hi, everyone. I'm Susanna Jolber. I'm with the project team working on um, communications and outreach. And I don't see the next slide, but <laughs> let's see. 
Yes, go ahead. Oh, the announcement had it in red that it was here. What in red where? On the on the on the media announcement that went out to everybody that's interested parties. Went out to everybody on the interested parties. It's there because I checked it and I was at the wrong location, so yeah. <laughs> it's definitely there. I just checked it too. Are, are you are you on the interested parties list? Are you registered? Yeah. yeah you know these four times, so I guess it is. Uh, well, if you, you know you have to request to be on the interested parties, list. submitting comments does not. All, okay, yeah, all of our responses to comments include an invitation. If you want to become a, be on the interested parties list, please email this particular address. So if you did not send that, you would not automatically. Okay. Yeah, well, if we get your name, just confirm with Sue that that, is, that you're on that list. But if the announcement did include that the meeting was here and it was in red on the, on the announcement. Is it here next month also? No. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. Good. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not to further any confusion. Subject to change. Possibly subject to change. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right, well, sorry. Sorry for if there was a miscommunication on this, but the, the announcement was very clear that the meeting was here. Um, yeah, we're usually at the road department, but when we expect kind of a larger crowd, um, we get this room, or if there's trouble with scheduling or there's something else at the road department. So, yeah, yeah. go ahead. This question is talking about residents, so I guess it's okay for us to just talk. Um, I think instead of thinking about future residences, it, it would be good to think about residences that are already in place when you're looking at land sales and the one on 97 was close to over 900 residences. So I think that's more important than residences that could possibly happen or hang gliders or I think your constituency that's already there and the tax base is more important than what might happen in the future. Yeah, I, I don't want to rehash the, the past on this, but in the early in the process when we had sites on Bear Creek Road and off Breaker Road that impact the neighborhoods, including my own. Um, the, the, the decisions like that are, are policy le level with the commissioners. Um, whether you agree with this or not, county zoning allows a landfill within a quarter mile of a residence. That is in county zoning ordinances. So that is the guiding document we have been using in our process. But for some reason, it couldn't be built near where you live? Because of the airport restriction. The Bear Creek and Rickard Road sites, as well as the site of the Red were dropped out, as well as the 97 site because of airport restriction. An advisory, a recommendation from the FA, not an advocate from the Again, I don't want to rehash the past, the past on this, but I just want to make sure you understand that, <clears throat> that uh, something like uh, the number of residents is impacted or proximity beyond that quarter mile zone is a policy uh, matter, not not a, a decision matter that this this is going to be achieved. And, but and but I would say that in general, we've had a conversation about wanting to keep that one mile roughly, absolutely, yeah. you know, distance um, from nearby residences, which is greater than the county. Um, rule, which may or may not, you know, depending on which location you're talking about and where a residence is, it may. But, but that's been our sense as a committee generally yeah, that we're trying you. to look at that distance. So, did you have a question too? Yeah, just to uh, finalize this deal on the advisory circular, it is an advisory circular, but it is to be used as guidance. Uh, I think it needs to apply. With site limitations and all the rest that they have set forth for uh, that they have set forth for uh, location of the six mile boundaries and so I want to clear that advisory circle. I know that you're using the different one that you have in correct but that six mile of that that advisory that site's six mile the airport has to meet four specific qualifications and one of the airports in this kind of meet that that's if you make sure you look at the section there that has those four specific requirements yeah but not, none of the airports and i confirmed this with the faa three different times in the past year that, that these so airports you decided to go with because of the future expansion possible future expansion of the airport move the boundary out so the the advisory that recommends a 
the five mile exclusion zone refers to an airport operations area and the, the property boundary and the Redmond Airport has this property boundary for future expansion. And when we, we reached out to them, they said, now we want to use that, that property boundary. And so that's what we, you know, we accepted. So you did not use the advisory survey to refer to the construction and the energy What's the what's the advisory? That's that's the one that that the airports have to meet four specific criteria to qualify under that. We use the it's a 33 C is is the advisory that that applies to the, the airports. It's the one listed in the handout for today. It references the advisory. Looking for the reference. Yeah. Okay, so just getting back to communications. Um, so the next uh, SWAC meeting on June 20th, we're doing a, an expanded um, meeting till noon to garner more uh, public comments on the um, finalist sites. So um, yeah, just to let you all know about that. Uh, we'll be doing another open house in the fall. Um, I think it's September. I don't have the updated slide or um, September. September 11th. Um, so I think the location will be here also. Um, so we'll invite everybody on the in interested parties list to that. Do you have a time of day for that one? Uh, I think we do. Yeah. 5 30 to 7. Okay. Can't see the slide. Um, so five, would, that, would there be an, uh, that, there probably wouldn't be a Zoom opportunity, would there? Um, there probably would be. Yeah. Uh, I think could we be, could yeah. maybe do that. Yeah. And we definitely will for the, well, we should be able to for the next SWAC meeting too. Um, we have the project story map up as well. And I looked uh, last night and we've gotten uh, about uh, 1,250 views of that. So people are going to that. And we're trying to keep it updated with the latest project information as, and as the sites get um, considered, we add them and then we take them away <laughs> and explain the process. And it's been sort of a fluid process. So we're trying to keep that as updated as we can. Um, and then as we go into this next phase two um, process that Dwight explained, uh, we'll be doing more targeted outreach to the neighbors. So the neighbors of the Roth East site and then um, the Moon Pit site as well and any others that come up. So talking to them more directly and talking about good neighbor agreements and things like that um, moving forward. Yes. In one of your earlier uh, meetings, you had identified uh, parcels that people were living on the start. And I don't know how you determined that because a lot of the ones in those thing were dead light structures that people were living in that you acknowledged as residents. Mm -hmm. And then my house, so not legal <laughs> was not recognized. That would be why. That's that why. Yeah. Is that is recognized if, if, if there's a residence listed on the improvement summary in the county record, then it was counted as a we check each. So if you did it through a building permit process, yeah, it probably was picked up, but it would not no. Probably 40 So we did, as requested by the committee, we did send a letter out to property owners in a two mile radius of both the Roth and the uh, um, uh, Moon Pit sites. So that, that's that's re regardless of any structures on the site. But as far as identification on a map, they're using mapping tools that are, are tied to the county dial system. And so if it's an unperfect structure, it wouldn't, it wouldn't show up on dial. So, um, but there were letters sent out that you should have received a letter if you're within two miles of the broad site. Is that an online question? Oh, okay. okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. My name is Sarah Palmer Antonio, and I have a um, I own property, not right next to the Roth East site, but it would have been the Roth West site. And it's um, for recreational use. We don't have a full-time home there, but two of my neighbors do. And they um, were, they've been living out there, I believe, since the 70s. So they're, you know, licensed to live out there. 
Uh, first, I just want to say thank you for at the last meeting motioning to take the Roth West site off of the list to be considered. Um, but I also want to still talk about the Roth East site and the winds out there specifically seem to not be addressed. It's a very windy area. ODOT has an anemometer at the OHV turnoff from Highway 20, as does the observatory. And when we're out there regularly, the winds don't stop from sunup to sundown. And even in the middle of the night, it's not a breeze, it's a moderate wind. So if you're planning on incinerating or um, burning anything or even constructing, that's going to be an issue in handling the dust um, and with the observatory, that's going to be an issue. Um, here, let me look at my notes. I mean, it's so bad that our water container blew away a couple months ago from our site and, and it went straight almost to Highway 20. So that is something to be considered going on. Also, with this site being a hundred year, or not this site, but with the county wanting to build a new landfill or waste management facility for the next hundred years, I encourage you all and the county planners to be really creative in the process. I found a site in Copenhagen, Denmark, that is an incinerator built in 2016. And it has such high tech scrubbers and filters that the emissions from it are virtually just steam. And they built a huge building and made it functional. So it's actually a ski slope, a hiking, a building you can hike on and do rock climbing on. And it's a it's a really big part of the community there. And even um, Queen Margareta II skis there frequently. So it's it's a pretty neat thing. And it's something to look into because nobody wants a landfill anywhere near their property. So having it be something that's a little more creative, um, I think would help. So I think that's all I had. Thank you for your time. Well, I, um, well, we will add this. So um, initially incineration was looked prior to this SWAC convening, there was a, a solid waste management plan um, committee that, that met to look at um, uh, the solid waste system for the for the next uh, 30 years um, and whether we should look at uh, 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 landfilling materials or are there other al alternate technologies that we might be able to use um, when the not landfill uh, runs out of capacity. Um, incineration is, is is one of those alternate technologies that was looked at at the time we are, um, those are generally developed by private developers. Those are, are not usually done by um, uh, uh, governmental entities. They're, they're very capital intensive projects. They'll cost anywhere uh, upwards of $200 million or more. Um, we are at a threshold in terms of the amount of waste that we have here in the county that um, uh, incineration is not, um, it's technically viable, but um, economically, it would be very expensive to, to have a smaller scale facility. You usually want to have an incinerator that is um, 15, uh, 1,500 to 2,000 tons a day of material running through it. You can scale it down. We're at about um, 700 tons a day of material. Um, and ideally, we'll have less than that as we divert more materials um, from our waste stream. So, um, so when we were looking at it in 2018, 2019, it was not deemed um, a viable technology. We will say concurrent to um, this process, we, we are going to um, do an assessment of uh, the state of alternate technologies again. Um, uh, by the middle of 2025 to be concurrent with uh, this process of getting down to one final site. So we do wanna be able to um, present to the board as we are looking at a final site that um, what are the other options and what are the potential um, costs to develop those other options and what would it take 
um, incineration will be looked at again. But that is that one honestly is is probably um, not going to make it uh, through that next process. But we will take a look at it. Um, uh, there will be other uh, waste to energy, waste to fuel products that will be looked at, um, as well as transport out of county. So, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Any question for Jeff? Has there been uh, in the last month? Has there been any uh, findings or any uh, negotiations with the moon pit? Uh, no, for now. We met with them a few months ago, and uh, Tim and I are going to be revisiting with them. Um, I think I mentioned, you know, the, the the lease versus purchase option can be a substantial hurdle for the county. Um, the, the one of the goals is that we make, we control our own destiny when it comes to our solid waste management program, and uh, putting our waste on somebody else's property is is not the ideal way to go. So that's something we certainly for for discussion with the, the owners of those things. Consider one of the. I'm sorry. Have you considered Kevin Kevin No, no. It was made very clear back at the very start of this the county would not exercise them in domain in place. And the reason why? That was the desire of the commissioners. I I, I think that's that's they use the they use the the cliche that you, that's really a nuclear option. <laughs> um, I forgot to mention this when I spoke earlier, uh, but having to do with alternate energy. There is a site um, the east of your east location on the log property that is currently working with a large corporation for wind power development. So we would like on the south side of the you know uh, from the Columbia River and that is that that might be an option that add into the site since you won't be using the whole acre. You know, if you at you may not have been at the meeting, Dr. Austin, but a, a while back, the, the comment was made regarding acquiring these larger properties like Roth, Roth East. That uh, you know, the, the, the landfill footprint is 250 acres over for half an eight to 50 acre parcel, I believe. So, recreation uses, um, you know, um, things like wind energy, uh, I suppose, it, it certainly options out that we're not going to just fence off those, you know, or maybe even continue to work with Ross for, for grazing rights on allow them to graze on the balance of the property. Because that property is 3,300-ish acres. You guys would only be interested in... I believe the parcel is 817. Are we talking about Roth East? Roth East, yes. 1706. Okay, I see. Right. 1,700 like, acres, yeah. They probably wouldn't want to acquire what they were had for sale two years ago. The entire... Uh, is that called the Roth East and West? Yeah, it was Roth East and West went to... 500 feet up on the high mountain, all the way down to the highway to the corner of my block. The, 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 the initial uh, um, steps in this rock east was not in the, in the, in the on the west, it was rock west. And uh, Steve Payne came forward and said you know, that this property is available as well, so we added that in. So before we move on, I, I need your name. We were, you need to make sure, please state your name when you speak. Oh, your name is Scott Dan. Okay, thanks, Scott. Um, I'm not sure if there's a question there. Uh, do you intend on trying to purchase Rock East and Rock West together? If, or are you just looking at only that east side alone? At, at the moment, we're Rock East is the is the partial that's under consideration. We we separate it now as two sites. Is there, have you looked at access to Rock East? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, which way would you think about bringing the trucks in? Because you could go the Rex Barber up the east side, which would be away from Pine Mountain Road. And even though I don't like the raw piece, that's the last you should. And, and, you know, and that's part of what this next page is, is you know, what are the, the best ways to go? And, you know, do you have a grade to be able to do that? And, you know, what, what other upgrades do you have to do to the local roads? So that's part of this process, just to ensure that all those 
those costs are, are worked into the, 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 the ultimate you know cost of developing the site. I'm sure that there are several options to access Rocky, the new access road and Ford Road, which is along the end of the property. Yeah, but isn't Port Road private along that? Is that the northern side of the country? They're probably in a public rights-away surprise for the highway. Okay. Okay. So there's the possibility yeah. that access could avoid the highway. Okay. Hey. Um, we're at the end of our agenda here. Um, any additional thoughts, comments, questions from the committee? So, well, the June meeting then is just the, our regular meeting just being extended by an hour to sort of, but it's still the same time frame. Yeah. For a little more public input, yeah. and it's going to be structured differently with like maps around, or how is it? Yeah, I think work? we'll probably have some. Yeah, okay, people. and then September yeah. will be more of an update. Okay. Yeah. And the, and the September one will be in the evening. Yeah, right. right. Well, so that we, we did one with the create program. other access. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, indirect to the landfill. I mentioned I was in Turkey. I couldn't believe the recycling options they have. Every gas station has about anywhere from three to five recycling bins. Hotels on the floors have have that. And even like a gas station will have metal recycling. It'll have can you know the cans and bottles and all that. Now as to whether some of those, I have to admit that people throw things in all of them. But uh, but I, I was impressed as to you know how seriously at least somebody is trying to do something there. Yeah, you know uh, Tim can reflect a little bit more on this, but the complexion of recycling in in the state of Oregon is going to change substantially over the next two years with the Recycling Modernization Act. There, you're going to see a lot of changes both on curbside collection, what can be recycled, yeah. and 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 actually probably one of the more important parts is accountability for what happens when it's put into a recycling bin. I'm not going to fall turkey or anything like mm -hmm. that. A lot, of, you know, a lot of recycling looks good when you throw it in the can, but what happens down the right. down the road with it is, is certainly questionable. And it will change substantially here in Oregon in the coming two years. Yeah, I, I think with the Recycling Modernization Act, there will be um, uh, changes to the residential, particularly multifamily and commercial recycling. Public space, however, is is a little bit different. Um, uh, that's not necessarily addressed by by that act, so that will end up probably being more locally driven. So we'll, we'll have to be looking at that. Okay, if there's nothing else, meeting adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody, yeah. for attending and participating. Yes.